while I was recording these stories, a spider came down from the ceiling and crawled across my arm and it freaked me out. So, please consider preemptively hitting that like button to support my now fear of the situation happening again. And if you have a story you would like to send my way, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. Okay, so I've had some minor glitches before, and you can read about them from my profile if you're curious. It's always little stuff, like seeing the cat outside whenever I remember letting him in. Don't worry, he's an indoor cat, he just sits in the sun when I'm outside too, or people in my life not being where they should be. This is one of those times. Some background. I live with my husband, our two sons, my best friend since freshman year of high school, 2001, I feel so old, and her two sons. We collectively parent the kids, and we consider ourselves to be one integrated family. DH is a casino dealer, and BFF is a wedding photographer, and I'm the stay-at-home mom and homeschool teacher. This incident was a few hours ago or so. So DH had already left for work, and BFF had a short wedding today, so she's been gone since this early afternoon. I was in the kitchen making dinner, and I heard her knock. Each adult has their own knock pattern because the kids wanted us to. And then I heard BFF's voice call, Hello? Her tone was partially in greeting and partially questioning. We have baby locks everywhere, so... I recognized that tone as meaning both, I'm home, and also I'm stuck in the laundry room, can you let me out? I called back, hey, how'd it go? But she didn't answer me. Usually the boys run to the door when a parent comes home, so I figured that she had her hands full, and they would give her a hand. But the boys didn't get up. Three of them were on devices in the living room, and the last one was in the kitchen with me. I sent him to go see if she needed some help, and he came back and said that he couldn't find her. After a few minutes, and another search, I realized I can just check the garage for her car, and it's gone. I call her, and she tells me that she hasn't been home since she left this afternoon. It starts to dawn on me, embarrassingly slowly, that none of the dogs started barking at the sound of her voice and then I remember how weird it was when the boys all ignored her, and also how the one in the kitchen looked confused when I asked him to go help. So, I asked them if they heard her come home, and they all said no. The one who'd been standing next to me in the kitchen said that I just started talking to nobody. Side note, I am tickled by the fact that not one child ever asked why we were looking for BFF. I start talking to thin air, and I asked them all to search the house for a parent they know is gone all day and isn't home yet. They were all just like, okay, and they started looking under beds and stuff. Not one thought to question it, and they thought that she might be under the bed. I love how delightfully weird my kids are. But for serious, I swear on my life that it was her voice. We were duet partners. And since then, I've spent 22 years listening to her voice. I was professionally trained for four years to specifically listen for her voice. I've heard that voice tell me secrets, and sad things, and happy things. Some things that I never thought anyone in the world would ever say. And she talks a lot. If there is a single voice in the universe that I am deeply attuned to, and could always reliably identify, regardless of context, it's hers, and I can't explain it. My husband, then boyfriend, Y, and I, F, we're looking around for a place to live together sometime last December. This takes place in Japan. 
we needed a place between our jobs, which were on the opposite side of the prefecture that we lived in, unfortunately. The first place we looked at rejected us from buying because I was a foreigner, even though my boyfriend was Japanese. He was pretty livid, and I told him that it was normal, though not fair. We kept looking until we came upon an ad for a house to rent. Old, but somehow, right. It really felt right to me. I loved it when I first saw the pictures. The area was really great too, and the price, and they were pet friendly, which is rare in Japan. How could it get any better? We were worried that we would be rejected again, but we were accepted happily. We signed on the day, and Y and I were so happy. It seemed perfect. After that first rejection, we had some thought that there could be some bad news, but everything worked out. We still lived in the house, and it's full of character, but something really strange happened that same day. We were on cloud nine, walking around the area, going to the supermarket. When we entered, we started heading towards the escalator, and I heard a familiar noise. I'd worked at Starbucks and other cafes for several years in America, so I knew what I heard. The grinding of coffee beans. Then... I looked down to the floor below, and I saw THE Starbucks sign. There were customers waiting too. I told why, and he looked and saw it himself. He even texted a friend about the Starbucks. That was the icing on the cake, to have my go-to cafe on the way to work. But I think you know the rest of the story. We came back to that supermarket, went looking for that Starbucks again after a hard day of moving in, but we only found a lemonade stand in its place. The sign was not the same. My husband isn't a believer of the supernatural, but even he was a bit boggled. He remembered it, and the message that he sent to his friend. We were so spooked. We laughed it off. Maybe we had a glitch because we were so happy, but I'll never know. In addendum to the post, the shopping center is called Tokotoko, and the lemonade stand that was in place of the Starbucks is a brand called Lemonica. It would be very difficult to tear down and replace the whole thing with another brand in just a week. Earlier this year, my husband went through a terrifying, life-threatening thing. And not to go into any details, but at the point of this story, he was still bedbound, and we were staying at my parents' house. Some relevant background, my parents' house is big. Two floors plus a rooftop apartment plus a basement. It's also pretty old though, and needs something fixed every month or so. My dad is very old school, and he deals with people he likes even if they overcharge him. He's been using the same plumber for years, same electrician, same gardener, etc. This happened back in my home country of Jordan. The country is mostly Muslim, but my family is Christian. So, we wake up that day and the whole kitchen is flooded. My dad had recently gotten a new water filter installed, and it was giving them trouble since the beginning. My dad had to leave, but he called his water filter guy, which is hella specific, to come fix whatever is going on. Water filter guy said he'll be there in a couple of hours. About an hour later, the doorbell rings, and my brother opens the door. It's a man in a suit with a little briefcase. My bro thought it was one of the doctors for my husband, so he immediately invited him in. The man immediately corrects him, and says that he's not a doctor, that he's there for the water filter. My mom knows the water filter guy, and this isn't him, but she just assumes that the original guy just sent this guy ahead. So, my mom asks what he needs. I'm in and out this whole situation as I take care of my husband. So the man goes to the roof, 
and looks at the water tanks, and he takes pictures. He came back down and sat in the kitchen with my mom, telling her what he thinks the issue is. The tanks need replacing. And how much they'll cost, and all of that. So, my mom calls my dad, and passes the phone to the man who gives my dad the rundown, and then my dad says he'll talk to his original guy about the price. The man starts arguing with my dad on the phone to the point that my dad basically yells at him and hangs up. At this point, my mom kind of apologetically asks him to leave, and that my dad will just talk to his boss because that's what he prefers. The man says, What boss? She tells him his name, and the man says he's never heard of that guy before in his life. Now my mom is freaking out. She asks who sent him, and he says nobody. So, she asks him how much she owes him, so she can quickly get him out of the house. He says that he noticed the man in the hospital bed, and that his only payment is that he's going to ask God to heal him. Then he left, and that was it. My dad's actual guy showed up a little later and fixed the filter, but my mom and I were shook by the whole thing. We talked about it in detail for hours. We talked to my dad, and my dad's guy, and the nurse that was there that day, and my brother who opened the door, and none of us could figure out how this happened, or who he was. This man just showed up to check water filters on the same day the water filter burst, but didn't want any compensation. Nobody sent him. Like, how? It still bugs me. My mom thinks he's an afreet or demon, but I just don't know. I was going through a lot of the time, so my mind might not have been all there, but everyone else that experienced this... Just help. Any ideas? The OP did edits to add... My husband's doing much better, thankfully. He's about 90% recovered, and is still healing. Thank you for your kind words, everyone. I hope he has a speedy rest of his recovery, and I hope he's doing well. I've told this story in a comment section of the subreddit, or the high strangeness one, but I didn't go into detail. This happened to my mother, but it involved me as well. It was winter somewhere between 2019 and 2021. I thought that it was last year, but after talking to my mom recently about this, it was definitely more time ago than it seemed. So, this is what happened. It was around 6 to 7 a.m., and I was coming back from a nightclub with two of my friends. And after crossing the river by boat, we went inside the surface subway that was still not running. However, my mother, who has always been very protective, wanted to pick me up from the subway, with her car without telling me that she would. Now, this is what happened according to her. As she was arriving to the subway station, she saw me inside the metro with my friends, so she knew exactly where I was, and who the friend was that was standing on the seat next to me. As she saw me, she quickly went around the station with the car, and parked it to call me to say that she was outside. This took maybe 30 seconds at most. What happened next was truly bizarre. When I answered the phone, which took maybe an additional 10 seconds, I was already some 8 or 9 metro stations ahead of the station that she was in. The same station that I was just in in her reality. To get there from where I was initially, it would take easily 15 to 20 minutes by metro, of course. I remember telling her on the phone where I was, and she became truly shocked and confused. I was still a little drunk, so I didn't give too much importance to it in that moment, but the next day after talking to her about the event, I knew that what happened was something very strange. I know that she wasn't lying, because she knew exactly where I was sitting and who I was sitting next to. 
we still have no idea how this happened. I've heard similar stories here on Reddit, and there must be something really complex in this existence that we are not aware of, or just can't comprehend. I work with my mom, and we own a little cafe. We have this ongoing joke whenever things get misplaced that the previous owner has been in and taken them in the night. We don't really believe that. As long as we had the place, everyone that works there has always commented, Oh, I thought I heard someone walk in, but then there isn't anyone there. And sometimes all of us will look up to the front of the shop at the same time, thinking that someone was there when there isn't. This happens at least once a day, but usually multiple times a day. Back to the misplaced item. This is happening a lot at the moment. As in specific knives that are only used for certain tasks, just going missing and then turning up days later on the side. Now, I know things can hide in plain sight, and sometimes you can't see for looking, but... This is becoming really, really frequent now. It's not as though we've put them back in the wrong place and then find them. We find them in plain sight, after days of items being missing, and then it reappears in an area that has been heavily used by one of us and been thoroughly cleaned down at the end of the day. So if it was ever there, it would have been put away. It's so odd, but... The frequency of this happening is becoming a little frustrating now. One of the ladies that works with us made a comment today that there must be a gremlin working behind her, moving everything. This lady has worked with me for over two years, and she's commenting also. I haven't mentioned anything at all to her, and she works opposite shifts to my mom, so they have not spoken about it. Also... A full panini machine went missing. We got a new one and stored the old one away just in case anything happened to the new one. We had a backup. I'm the only person with keys apart from my mom. But mom wasn't even in the country at the time. It reappeared about three or four months later in exactly the same spot it had been stored in, but yet no one was able to find it for months. My mom thought I had thrown it away and was lying to her. I'm not sure if this is relevant, but since the shop was opened 19 years ago, it has had three previous owners. Me and my mom being the fourth. Two of the three previous owners have died whilst owning the cafe, and the lady that we bought it off of sold it because she is terminal with cancer. Anyway, any thoughts or ideas on this would be great. Especially ideas to make it stop would be appreciated. Hello, Raven. Longtime listener, first time submitter. I have a story that I believe belongs here. When I was 18 years old and dating my first real boyfriend, he lived in the city while I was in the suburbs. He was staying on a friend's mom's couch while they were saving to get their own place, and some friends and I were coming to pick him up so that we could all attend a local street festival. This was going to be my first time meeting his friends, but my friend who drove us already knew pretty much everyone, so I was going to be the only new face at this gathering. When we arrived, he introduced me to all of his friends and I sat down on the couch next to one of maybe a dozen or so people at the house at the time. The guy I sat next to was the oldest brother of the three guys, with whom my then-boyfriend was crashing with. The youngest two brothers, Stephen and Peter, only mildly resembled one another, but this guy definitely looked like Stephen, the brother that my then-boyfriend ended up moving in with. He had a similar face, but with a stronger jawline. He told me that his name was Eric, and we even shook hands. After a few minutes of conversation, those of us going to the festival took off, 
and I said goodbye to Eric and told him that it was nice to meet him. Skip to several months later, and my boyfriend and Steven had finally moved into their own place. Steven and I are on the couch one day, and he mentions something about his brother. I inquire which one, and a puzzled look comes across his face. He explains that he only has one brother, Peter. It turns out, every single person in that house that day can be accounted for, except the guy that I not only spoke with, but physically touched and shook hands with. I was shocked and confused, and told Steven about my encounter, and he said that he believed me because he could tell I was being genuine when I asked. We went over every person that was there that day when my boyfriend got home, and every single person was accounted for, except for Eric. No one recalls me talking to anyone on the couch, either. Steven was so bewildered that he even asked his mom if she had miscarried, and she assured him that she did not. I'm not sure who or what Eric was, but the only thing I can come up with is that this was either a glitch or a parallel universe opened up or something. Or he was a ghost. I'm really not sure, but I remember him so vividly. Does anyone out there have any idea of what this could have been? And thank you, Raven. This was my creepy glitch moment. Hey, everyone. I have to share something bizarre that happened to me a while ago, and it's been eating at me ever since. A bit of background about me. I'm a 31-year-old guy living in the southeast side of Norway, and I work as a web developer. My daily routine has been pretty much the same for the past three years. I walk to and from work, usually arriving at the office around 0530 and leaving around 1400 hours. So here's where things get weird. It was a typical early morning walk to work. I was strolling along the roads on the outskirts of my city, plugged into my tunes, and soaking in the serene beauty of the autumn winter night sky. My route is pretty straightforward, a dimly lit road with a sidewalk on each side. I usually stick to the left sidewalk out of habit. Now, I love to gaze at the stars and moon during my walk, especially in the crisp winter air. However, this particular morning took a turn for the strange when my Samsung Galaxy Buds started acting up, losing connection with my phone sporadically. I fiddled with them for a bit, but eventually gave up, attributing the issue to a dead battery. And that's when I noticed it. The air was thick, with a static charge, reminiscent of the atmosphere just before a thunderstorm yet the sky was completely clear. I tried to shake it off and continued my walk, but then the hairs on my arms started to stand on end, and an intense ringing assaulted my ears. I thought, maybe I was having a panic attack. They've hit me a few times in the past, so I employed my usual coping techniques. Unfortunately, they were to no avail. In a growing state of alarm, I scanned my surroundings only to realize that, somehow, impossibly, I was now on the right sidewalk. I hadn't crossed the road, I was sure of it. An eerie silence enveloped everything. No wind, no city sounds, just nothing. Even the moon seemed to betray me, showing a phase indicating a week had mysteriously passed. I frantically checked my phone, and it was dead. My watch had also stopped ticking. The distant city lights, which should have been visible, were enveloped in unsettling darkness. Now, I was genuinely freaking out. I closed my eyes, desperately trying to rationalize the impossible events unfolding around me. My heart raced as the static electricity and the ringing returned. Fearfully, I opened my eyes and I was back on the left side of the road. 
the static and ringing had ceased. The moon was back to its correct phase, and the distant city lights twinkled reassuringly. My phone and watch were functioning as if nothing had even happened. And, apparently, only a few minutes had passed. I sprinted the remaining 2.4 kilometers to work, my mind whirling with the inexplicable occurrence. I didn't share this with anyone until now, but there is one more thing. I remembered that my exercise app was running on my phone during the incident. When I checked it upon reaching work, I noticed that the GPS lost track of me precisely at the time of the incident. I can't explain what happened, and maybe the phone's power loss could account for the GPS issue, but still. Has anyone experienced anything like this before? I'm at a loss, and would love to hear your thoughts or similar experiences. Hi Raven, a little background story. This glitch happened exactly at the moment when it had to happen. To prove to my mom that glitches are real, and that they do happen. But also to prove to myself once again that, when you wish for something with a purpose, it comes true. This follows me all my life. Another interesting thing about glitches, which I have noticed in others too, when I watch videos about glitches, they happen within a short time. It doesn't have to be a rule, of course, and many times it's not. The most interesting thing that led to this glitch was that this time, I wanted a slightly different glitch, considering that, so far, I'd only had those glitches with things disappearing and magically reappearing, or just disappearing things that were supposed to be in a certain place. I've also had those with duplication as well, and some of loss of time with no memory of what happened during the loss of time. First, I wanted a glitch in which I could see myself, as many people experience in your story. But then I think a little bit and asked myself if I really wanted to. I was afraid that it would be too scary. Then, I just wanted a different glitch but I was imagining glitches with my mom. And here is the glitch. That day, I lost my credit card, and was told that the card was found and was waiting for me in a store. I told my daughter that I'd lost the card and that they found it, but not to tell anything to Grandma, my mom, so that Grandma doesn't get angry because I lost hers a month ago and just got a new one. After that, and two hours had passed, I was eating in the kitchen, my daughter was in her room, and Grandma was on the balcony. And suddenly, my mom enters the living room, which is connected to the kitchen, and asks, Did you lose your card again? I laugh and ask her how she knows, believing that my daughter told her because she likes to betray everyone in such situations. And my mom says, Just now, you shouted to her in her room asking if she saw your card. I'm looking at her, and I could not believe that this glitch that has happened to others just happened. Because I knew right away that it was a glitch. Because I didn't say a word when I was eating, and the card wasn't even on my mind. I told my mom that I didn't say anything, and my mom asked me, You're choking with me, right? I started laughing and told her, You see, that's your glitch now. Mom didn't believe it, and another hour later she thought that me and my daughter were joking because, as she said, she could clearly hear me shouting to her in another room, and that my daughter said that she hadn't seen it. What is also very interesting in that whole story, my mom is quite deaf, and the balcony door was closed. There was no way that she would have heard me, even if I shouted, and even less heard my daughter from the other room. Which, by the way, is on the other side of the apartment. Hi. So, 
basically, I, 18 male, was babysitting for my cousin's one-year-old daughter two days ago, since I had free time on my hands, and also because their house has a snooker pool, and I wanted to help them out because the parents had to go out of town for some event. So, I called my only two friends to accompany me while they were gone for two days. The first day was fun. We ordered takeout, played on our PlayStation, played some snooker, all whilst the baby was peacefully having the time of her life chewing on her toys and sleeping. It was 8 o'clock when I asked my friend to go get some milk, since we ran out, and I had to feed her before she slept. I changed her pads and I went to the kitchen to wash her bottle feeder because of the residual milk from a few hours ago. My friend returned with the milk, and as I took it to the kitchen, my jaw dropped. There was perfectly warm milk inside the bottle with its cover closed. I yelled for my friend thinking he was playing a prank on me, but he assured me that he wasn't. And I believed him, because, well, he was outside. And I threw away the remainder of the milk whilst he was outside. And I kept the empty bottle on the counter closed. And also, the pan that I used to warm the milk was clean from the last time I washed it. I was also sure that the last batch of milk from the container was given to her a few hours ago, because I threw away the milk carton. I checked for the empty carton in the bin, and to my surprise, it was there. Empty. I had no idea what to do. I started shivering and my friend asked me to drop the act since he thought I was playing a prank on him. But God knows that I wasn't. I wish. I poured the milk in a glass because no way in hell was I about to give the girl this milk. I pasteurized the new batch, and I gave it to her. Now I was extremely curious, and I was having trouble sleeping, so I got up and went to the kitchen, and I drank the milk from the glass to see if it was... real. It tasted fine except for the fact that there was no Enfamil infant formula in it, which made it even weirder because I wasn't allowed to give her just the milk. I shrugged the event off until today, when I got the worst, let's just say, stomach issue, ever. I don't know what would have happened if I gave her the milk which magically appeared. I don't know what to think of it, but this is one of the most terrifying moments of my life. Me and my friend have kept it as a secret because I'm pretty sure no one would believe us. It's a feeling that I can never explain to somebody. Any theories as to what happened? Okay, this is going to sound crazy because I know how it sounds, but... Trust me when I say that this felt too real to be part of my imagination. Basically, I watch my little cousin from time to time, and my auntie always leaves the keys for me. Now, this key was different, but I didn't have it in me to question it because I thought my cousin left his keys. And it opened the doors, no problem. There were three keys to it with a lanyard connected. And when I got inside, I put the stuff down and my auntie's key was on the counter. I thought that maybe she forgot them. After telling my auntie this, I tried looking for the keys that I used to open the doors, but they were gone. Literally nowhere in sight, just gone. I know that this sounds crazy. I felt them, saw them, and I used them, but they are nowhere to be found and everyone else had their keys. So what key did I use? How did I get inside? And where are the keys that I used? I can tell you exactly how they looked, how they felt, but I won't have proof because I don't actually have the keys. They disappeared. It's like I pulled them out of thin air and they disappeared after they served their purpose. I honestly want answers because now it looks like I'm going crazy when I clearly know what I saw, used, touch, and know. 
but how can I explain this? My cousins probably think this is kind of like a scene to a movie, but it felt too real. It was real. And to complete this crazy day, my cousin said something that made it feel like I've lived this day before. What the heck is happening? I'm freaking out. I live just outside of a big city in the UK, and I get the bus all the time from my house to the center of town. There are a few different buses that go to my area, but only two that drop me off right outside of my house. That being the number 12 and the number 13, and occasionally the number 12A as well. I was waiting for a bus to take me home from town the other night, and I saw the number 12 approaching. Excellent, I thought to myself, because it's gone a shorter route than the number 13. So I got on and sat down. Now, I've caught the bus hundreds and hundreds of times, so I know the route blindfolded, and I could tell that we were not driving the way the number 12 usually goes. However, it also wasn't the route the number 13 nor the number 12A goes either. We were driving through a part of town that I don't recognize. I'm freaking out, thinking that I must have seen the wrong number and gotten on the wrong bus. So I look out the window and try to see what services are listed on the bus stops that we pass. I see number 49, number 23, and number 24. Bollocks, I've definitely gotten on the wrong bus, I think to myself. I shout over to the only other person riding the bus, and ask him what bus this is, and he yells that it's the number 13, which confuses me even more. Sure enough, we eventually end up on the route the number 13 takes, and I get home. When the bus leaves, I look, and it is indeed the number 13. I can't stop thinking about that ride, as it freaks me out how I can't explain what I saw and what happened. I can understand misreading the bus number, even though I distinctly remember thinking about how the 12 was faster than the 13, but the route being wrong, and the signs confirming it, baffles me. So, that, my friends, was this week's Glitch in the Matrix collection and my return to narration after not having posted since last Monday. If you've all been keeping up, you know it's been kind of a rough week, but we will continue to push forward and accept every day as it is, and do what we can to make the most of it. For those of you who have not been following, it's been a rough week. I think that's the best way to just put it in the end. So, anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed this collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. It was nice to do some stories today. I missed doing this. In the short time that I didn't do it, I missed it. So, it appears my work brings me a sense of equilibrium, if you will. Keep that in mind. Anyways, if you did enjoy these stories, please do hit that thumbs up button, as it does help the video perform better. You can also subscribe to the channel if you liked what you heard and you're new and haven't been around to hear these before. I do these every Monday, and I do them typically every week, and sometimes on Tuesdays if it's a bad week, but, you know. I also do a bunch of other stories if you like those, so check those out too. Um, you can also join Patreon or channel memberships, where for at least as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to content like this and access to my novel as I write it. It is a story I'm writing. Those who have read it so far have said they're enjoying it, so maybe you'll like it. I don't know. All that stuff will be, the, the, the novel will be public once it's done, so just gotta get get it finished kind of thing, yeah. Um, hmm, there's also the super thanks, which is just a tip to the channel, just a bit of support. Never expected, but always appreciated. Now, the other thing we do on Mondays, if you look on the screen right now, you'll see responses to what we call the word of the week, or the watu, or wow, or wado. Tao? I don't know what it is. 
the word of the week. The word of the week is a situation where I give you a word, or in last week's case, an emoji. Because it was Halloween week, so. You use said word or emoji in a sentence, and I include it next week on the screen as a manner of shouting you out for going above and beyond. People on the screen now in several minutes prior to now went above and beyond, left the emoji or an emoji. I was a bit loose with what I accepted, so there's that. And they're amazing for it. All of them did more than they had to, and I appreciate it more than I could ever say. Now, this week we are back to the words of the week, and this week the word of the week is equilibrium. E-Q-U-I-L-I-B-R-I-U-M. It's a noun. It is a state of intellectual or emotional balance, a state of adjusting between opposing or divergent influences or elements, or a state of balance between opposing forces or actions as either static or dynamic. It's also balance, just balance for the most part, so. And as I said earlier, my work gives me a sense of equilibrium in the first definition. Yeah. So leave me the word of the week in a sentence, get featured next week, get it in before Sunday whenever I intend to do the next video, and we'll be golden. Until then, friends, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And until I see you again, much love, and sleep well.